So when we last left off, we had started to work on our project uh, that has come together from part one of the month of the class to this part. You should have a copy then in your flash drive of the work that we're working with. And it looks like we're going to be getting Amber Alerts. So whosoever that is, I guess we can't do much about it, but... The... Um, project, you should have it on your flash drive. I've got my apps folder and I've got my project, my SDCE, in my apps folder. I put a copy of it into the network folder with last week's date, if you want that, but you should be working on the one on your flash drive. I'm going to um, load, load it up uh, in the emulator or real device. So we'll open up node, command prompt, so on the command prompt switch over to your F drive. Remember it's just F, it's not CDF, just F, CD apps. I've got all my apps in an apps folder. My project is called my SDCE, so CD into that, my SDCE. If your project has the, the full name and all of that, the, the date that is, remember the trick is you can start to type the name of the, of the folder and press tab, and it should fill in the rest of the folder name. But anyway, we go to that, and I'm going to do Cordova Emulate Android. And that'll take its time to, to load up sort of uh, emulate Android. All right, so um, what we need to do is confirm um, the project currently loads up. Um, it still has a couple of little things, such as the get directions. That's not fully quite set up yet, so that's where we'll, we'll take it from. So I'm going to let that emulate on, on the side, but what I will do then is open a folder for the project, a folder of the project in Explorer. So I'm going to open... If you still have the exact work that I had from last time, you're going to open the index file, index2, and dir. Open all three of those in Notepad. Index2, as you recall, is the default index file that we get when we create a brand new Cordova project. Index is the index file from last month, and dir, of course, is the directions. And so then just to compare with index and index2, <coughs> what we took out of index2 was that we needed uh, this, top, this top part, this content security policy, format detection, MS app highlight, the viewport, and then we also wanted the Cordova JS file and we put that inside of the index file. We're going to need to do that for the DIR file in a moment. And I had said, uh, with the brand new Cordova 5, it has this meta tag of content security policy that's supposed to um, protect uh, some cross-script security issues. Uh, for us, it's actually going to get in our way for a couple of things. And so what we'll be doing is deactivating the line while we're testing things. Um, so let's do this. In your index file, your current index file project, let's comment out line 14. We're going to comment out, not delete it because we'll use it later, but for the moment we'll comment out line 14. This is an HTML document, so we comment with HTML comment tags, which is the angle bracket exclamation dash dash. And then at the end of the line, dash dash, angle bracket. So comment out line 14. And 
and I'm going to need to do basically what I've got in the index file. I'm going to need to add that code over to the dir file. So I'm going to put the dir file side by side. Remember, you can right-click the tab, move to other view. The dir file is going to need um, the items that are in the index. So let's see. From the index file, I'm going to copy, starting with the comment on line 5, I'm going to select and copy that down to um, line 18. So that's the comment down to the viewport. In the dir file, I'm going to replace lines 5, 6, and 7. That's the old version of the viewport. You've got these two Apple mobile web app meta tags that are only relevant to a web app viewed on an Apple device, so we don't need that. I'm going to replace lines 5, 6, and 7 with what I copied here in, in index. Paste that. What I also need from the index file is the line 30, which is the script of the cordova.js file. So I need this reference over to Cordova. Copy that. And we'll paste it basically in the same place where we've got jQuery mobile 145. Uh, jQuery mobile right there, which looks to be line 21. So copy the, this Cordova, well, not line 21, line 24. Copy line 30, which is the Cordova.js file from the index. <clears throat> Copy that over to line 24. So what we've done is we've brought over this, uh, this Cordova uh, code from the index file to the dir file. Now those should be more in sync. I'm going to save. In case you haven't done so, I will do save all. So that'll save both the index and the dir file. And then you can emulate it or run it. Just to confirm everything is running like it's supposed to. This is one of the things we didn't get to at the very end of last time, so that's a little holdover. Once that's done, then we're going to add uh, some Cordova functionality that is no longer. I mean, to replace something that is no longer relevant in the app. So let me run that and then I'll go on. And as I said previously, perhaps if you are testing this on your real device and you're trying to run Android and you get some sort of error in the console, in, in the command prompt, uh, something about certificates and such, not compatible. Uh, that usually is fixed by uninstalling your app from your device and then running it again. It might have a mismatch with, with devices and so forth. Uh, with your virtual device, it doesn't matter, of course, because every time we activate a new virtual device, it's activated from scratch. So there's no residual app from last time, and there should not be that conflict. So the splash screen loaded up. I can browse the app a bit. In my, in my PC screen, this was not working before, but now it is. I've got this picture that's loading up from Wikipedia. It's loading a bit slow because our network is terrible nowadays. Uh, and so um, that goes to show that I can load external content into my app. Pros and cons about that are pro is that if I load a, an image from an external resource, the pro is that my app is smaller, because then that graphic is not stuck into my... Let me interrupt the class. Is someone's phone going off over here? Yeah, I know it's the Amber Alert, but can someone maybe like look at their device? If you're over here somewhere? Everyone should be able to mute that, so if you just triple check your phones in this area, somewhere here.
if you have this resource that is loading up externally, it makes your app smaller because then all these graphics are not built into your app. The problem, of course, is if there is an external resource and you've got a slow internet connection, then the graphic will load, will load slowly or not at all if you don't have the internet connection. And so my project has uh, has loaded up. Um, if you look over on the art on the art page, we have latest classes. And that button at the moment it's still designed as if this was a website, and therefore it wants to load a web browser. And it may or may not open it very well. I'm going to try to open latest classes in the emulator. And what it did was it, it seemed to have jumped me over to the built-in web browser. And so it's, I'm in the web browser, I'm done with that, and then I suppose uh, if, I, if a person were to only look at this screen and they press back on their device, it would take them back to the app. That's nice, but most people are not just going to look at that one screen. They're going to say, oh, tell me more about this class here, Music Appreciation. They'll click on that. Then they go in a few levels deep into the website, and now they have to press back 10 times to get back to the app. That's not the best solution. We're going to use something called the in-app browser, which will be that a web browser will load within your app, and you can have a full history of going forward and backward in history, and an easy way to close the in-app web browser, and then it takes you right back to the last point in your app. So it's subtle but it's going to be very useful once it's real. So again, I, I do this on my real device, it goes to latest classes, but I press back. We're going to do the in-app browser. Let's load up our web browser on your computer, and let's go over to look at the Cordova documentation so we can see how this works, and then we'll actually do it. So load your web browser. We'll go to cordova.apache.org. We'll look at the documentation screen and then the plugins. The documentation and then plugins. And we want to look at the documentation for the in app browser. So I'm in the plugins and I'm going to find in app browser. This will launch URLs in another in app browser instance. So sort of like loading a mini web browser within my app. Okay, so this plugin provides a web browser view that displays when calling cordova.inappbrowser.open. So there's a very basic example here. In the first example, a variable is created. And we've got the method cordova.inappbrowser.open with a few parameters, which we'll be explaining in a moment. The, the in-app browser window behaves like a standard web browser and can't access Cordova APIs. For this reason, the in-app browser is recommended if you need to load third-party or untrusted content instead of loading that into the main Cordova web view. The in-app browser is not subject to the whitelist, nor is opening links in the system browser. So it's sort of like if you've got experience in web design with something called iframes. Did anyone ever use iframes or have heard of iframes? It's similar to that in that we're opening another website from within our project. In HTML, we have something called an iframe, which will allow another website to load inside of our website in a little window, which has pros and cons. Here, we're going to open a, a separate web browser inside of our app, and it's going to be separate from the main app, so it won't interfere with the main app. 
it has its own back and forward and close button And so the way that it works is we've got cordova.inapbrowser.open. We feed it a URL. We give it a target and some options. So uh, the URL is a string. So that's the URL is the address, HTTP colon slash slash etc. It's a web address. Target, we have the traditional HTML targets of self, blank, and system. So we have self opens in the Cordova web view if the URL is in the whitelist, otherwise it opens in the in-app browser. Blank opens in the in-app browser and system opens in the system's web browser. So we'll be using blank in that it opens in, the bra in this little mini browser itself instead of trying to take over the view of the current website. And options are uh, location yes or no. Location is is the is the address bar and the backward and forward buttons like a web browser if we don't want that to appear we can say location no but that's going to limit people's ability to browse your content in the in-app browser we have a few items also but this only works for android hidden set to yes to create the browser and load the page but not show it so we can load something in the background but not actually show it until necessary Clear the cache, clear the session, we can do zoom, hardware back. If it's set to yes, use the hardware back button to navigate backward through the in-app browser's history. So you've got a back button in your Android device, and at the moment it's not exactly tied to what we're going to see in the in the in-app browser. If we want to connect it, we can add hardware back equals true, and then we'll be or yes, and then we'll be able to go back with it. For iOS. Uh, we can change some things about the button and so forth. For Windows. Alright, so we're gonna do we're gonna do this. We'll go back to Notepad. Back to Notepad line 166 of the index file line 166 has the button in the art classes screen where it will load the latest classes there's the a tag with that link and then that's a button instead we want that to do something else we want it to load a URL getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, we could add the code that we see in the documentation directly to this right now and it'll work. But thinking ahead, we might need to open external websites more than once. So if we add, if we hard code that feature into that one button, it'll work for that one button. But when we want to use it for multiple buttons, we'd have to hard code it to multiple buttons. That means we're going to do more work in the future. Uh, if we instead use a function where we define a generic function which we then can reuse as necessary, that'll give us better results. We can then use that function as necessary and load the appropriate parameter at the appropriate moment, and that in the long term will be better for us. So sometimes it's about figuring out the technique, figuring out the algorithm, spending some time with it early on. Once we've got that done, then the future iterations will be faster or easier. So my point is we're going to set this up via a function. Let's change line 166 inside of the tag, inside of the first tag, right after data inline true. Let's add on click equals. We'll say that once we click on this button, we will run a function. We will call a function. And we'll call the function get URL open close parentheses. semicolon right there. So we're going to call a function called get URL. We're going to invent a function called get URL and what get URL will do is the in app browser. So I'm going to save that. 
And um, where do we define our custom JavaScript again? Anyone remember? That's right, Codica external.js. So let's open this Codica.js file in Notepad. This is where we're defining all of our custom JavaScript. <coughs> so back in your project folder, let's go ahead and open the Codica.js file. At the end of the document, line 26, we're going to create a brand new function here. We're going to create a brand new function called getURL. So we're creating a function that we can reuse. I'm going to refer again to the Cordova documentation, so I'll do a little copy and paste from Cordova. Uh, scroll down to where you, it's a little bit ways down, scroll down to where you see example, and we have some, this is var ref. Copy <coughs> what's after the equals. Copy from Cordova, blah, 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 semicolon. Don't, you don't need the, the var part, actually, for the way we're going to do it. So find example, and you'll see Cordova in app browser, open Apache blank location, copy that. And in Notepad, we will paste that into the get URL. We still need to fine tune this, as I'll explain in a moment. But let's save the JavaScript file and go back to the index file. We need to tweak a little thing. Back to the index file, line 166. We're no longer going to need this rel external property. It's not going to behave the same way, so remove where it says rel equals external. Actually, we also don't need target blank. It's not behaving exactly as before. Remove that part. And then we've got a href, this whole address. Well, that's the address I actually want to display in the in-app browser. So I'm going to select the address that's inside of this href. I'm going to select it and cut it. So notice how this is simplified. I've got href, nothing for the moment data role, data icon, data inline, and on click. I took out the rel, external, and the target blank. And I cut, I didn't just delete it, I cut the href address. I'm gonna replace it with a pound symbol just as a, as a dummy placeholder link. I'm gonna save the index. This address that I've cut, I'm gonna paste it into my function. Switch back to my JavaScript and notice the way this works. Cordova dot in app browser dot open. We tell it what address, uh, how do we open the address, and do we show the location, the address bar at the top. Well, we don't want Apache.org. We want the address that we just cut. So I'm going to replace Apache, the whole address here, with the one I cut from the index. And now our button is, has an on click. So when someone clicks the button, it will run the function get URL, and get URL currently goes to this address. So let's save all your files. Go ahead and run this in your emulator or real device. Remember the trick about doing both at once. Cordova run Android and and Cordova emulate Android. chaining those two commands. We're saying first run the Android, then when that's done, and then run emulate the Android. 
but you can switch them around, of course. I want to do both. So I'm going to run that command. I'm going to see this load up in a moment. As this loads up, the concept is functional functionality-wise, it'll be very, very similar, but now it'll take advantage of the in-app browser, a little mini web browser that runs in your in your app. We've changed the original uh, we've changed the original button so that now it takes advantage of the in-app browser. It's not quite polished yet. I want to do something else. I want to see how it works so far. And while this is loading up, actually, it's on one of my one of my sheets. It's on sheet seven. Using the in-app browser. So if you want to look a little bit ahead where we're going, you can look there. But let's see, this is finally loading. So I've got my real device. I'm going to go over to Art. I'm going to tap Latest Classes. What happens is a little mini web browser loaded up in my device. I can go forward and back through the through the history. It's got a built-in back button and a close button. So I'm not going to have to press back ten times to get me back to my app. I have a simple close button, and I'm still in my app. When it loads up on my virtual device, I'll show you. It's a little basic thing, but if you think about how powerful this is, this can load a completely external resource into your, into your app, and it'll exist within its own little web browser. So in a sense, it's quarantined from the rest of the app. You could load up some other thing from some existing website. Maybe you've already got a website that's got some sort of shopping cart option. Well. That website is fully functional, it's online, I can load it in the in-app browser when I'm ready to buy a product, and, and in a sense it could be then opening within the project. So let me show you here. Art, latest classes, this pops up here, it's showing an address, it's got back and forward buttons. In browsing, I can fully interact with this, it's got its own back buttons and so forth, I can close that, I'm still in the app. So in a sense, subtly different than how it used to be, but now more correct. The other way, when before we did this, was jumping you, was removing you completely from your current app, putting it in, in a pause state, and moving you over to your built-in web browser, Chrome or Firefox or Opera or whatever. This keeps you within your app. So I've tested on both of my devices. It works pretty well. I'll answer questions if it works or not in just a moment, because actually it's not quite complete. Right now, it works perfectly for this button. But if I wanted to load a different website in a different screen with a different button, and I, and I reused get URL, all buttons are going to point back to that address. I want to make it a little bit more generic. So if I further define my function to accept a parameter, if I say when we launch or when we run get URL, at that moment I can also specify which URL. That URL will then get passed through the gate here and be applied to the address. So actually what I want to do is I want to cut that address, don't delete it because we need it, but cut the address we have inside of the the quotes, cut it, and because I don't want to lose it, I'm going to paste it at the very end of my document. I won't leave it there forever, but just paste it down there. Uh, 
and I'm going to say, okay, when we use get URL, we also have to specify which URL. So within the parentheses we're specifying, we're accepting a parameter, and the parameter will be called the URL. When I'm trying to get the URL, I can specify what the URL is. And then I'm going to change this so that it says the URL, not in quotes. Think of this as a variable. I'm passing a variable into this open method of in-app browser. Therefore, if I put this in quotes, it would literally try to go to the website, the URL, not the URL in the variable. So add the URL, no quotes. Spelled exactly the same both places, of course. Now our function is very generic, and not in a bad way. It's generic in that we can reuse it over and over as necessary. So this address down here, then, we're going to kind of put it back where we got it from in the index file. I'm going to cut that again. So confirm get URL has a variable a parameter the URL. It's going to try to open the URL. No quotes. Back to the index file. Back to line 166. We will not use the href. Instead, on get URL, there's our get URL function. In the parentheses, we're going to put the address, but we we have to feed it a string. So we have to put this in quotes. And we have to be careful here. We've already used double quotes around the whole thing. If I were to add another double quotes here, it would break things. Right? If I put in an address here, address.com. Notepad is giving me a subtle um, clue that something's wrong. A little too subtle, but something's wrong here. The text is black. It's just supposed to stay purple. That's because open quote end quote. Gibberish, open quote, end quote. So we need to feed it a string, quotes, but we've already used the string in the outer level. So no problem. If we use single quotes on the inner level, perfect. So outer level, double quotes, open quote, end quote. Inner level single quote, open quote, end quote. So if we need to have quotes with inside of quotes, outer level will be one kind of quote, inner level will be another kind of quote. It could be vice versa. Outer level could have been single quotes, inner level could have been double quotes. Doesn't matter, as long as they are different. same thing. Because it's going to parse this, it's going to process it. Open quote, where's the open ending quote? There's the ending quote. Open quote, where's the ending quote? There's the ending quote. And that also works. I'm just going to put it back the way we're used to. Okay, so the address then that we're feeding this function in the single quotes is the address I cut a moment ago. So paste. And now our get URL function should work exactly the same as before, but now it's generic. So at another button, if I need to call another website, I just reuse get URL, and then in single quotes put in the address, and it'll do its thing. Let's see if that works. Save all, and run it. So our get URL function ultimately uses the uh, in-app browser to load external websites inside of our app in its own little mini web browser. And that is made possible with Cordova. We have the cordova.js file attached to this index file and the um, and the um, DIR file, and therefore we can learn these. Ex we can load these external resources within our project. So 
once I confirm this works for me, then I'll take questions to see if it works with you. Alright, so it's loading my project. I will go to Art. Latest classes. And I'm confirming it's opening the college's website within its own in-app browser. I can close that, and it takes me back to my app. So it works the same as before, but now it works a little better. And here it's coming in my virtual device, so I'll go check the art screen, latest classes, opens in the in-app browser. Very good. This has its own zoom in, zoom out. Close that, back in my app. So that's working. Uh, raise your hand if that worked. Okay, good. Question? Thanks. I'm going to try to rotate the screen. It is rotating. So I'll say this portrait. Yes, because we set our config XML file a little while ago, there's an option in there that says uh, orientation equals portrait. So it's not letting us go to landscape because we locked it as portrait. So that's here in the config XML, line 19. If we want the ability to go portrait or landscape, you can remove or comment line 19, or I believe we can set it to value auto, and it will choose, which is the same as just not even including the line or commenting it, but we locked it to portrait. Is there a way we just could the browser and start stopping normal browsers on mobile devices? That's a good question. I don't think so. I have to look that up, but I don't think we can have just the in-app browser landscape. I think the whole app is locked. Whole app is locked to portrait, including the in app browser inside of it. All right, so we'll take a quick moment. Anyone need a little help? Is your code working? Raise your hand if you need any help. Yeah. 
the script tag actually has a pair. And so we'll go open the script tag on the script tag. side controls. I don't know if there's a way to go back to it without going to print it after that. Sometimes the course of the trip. Okay, I'm just saying that's okay. I don't know why we just get stuff like all of these things disappear once you go to this. I would just recommend creating a new one. And uh, creating it, make sure you select the option that it says with skin still. That way you can get the back button. So you have, uh, in the documentation, you have all of these different options, and there's some quirks, and you have other options as well, um, some additional methods, like uh, what happens when you close it, show it, remember we can load it in the background, and then show it when necessary, and hide it and all of that. We can do extra stuff, execute a script at the same time, so it's not just show a website, show a web page. We can do other things with it. We're not going to need to do that. But I'm showing you here that um, this particular uh, object of um, the in-app browser has other methods. What happens when you, when you load the site? What happens when you close it? Other ways to close it? So you can look at that on your own. But we've got it to do what we wanted it to do. Maybe we want to change the look of it. We can insert some CSS into, the, into that view so that maybe we can style it differently than the default. But that's um, for you to continue to, to look at if you'd like. So I'm going to go back. And um, the Cordova documentation here has all of these plugins that we can tap into. So our app is not going to use most of them because our app is this... Is this uh, unofficial app of the college where you can view classes, you can save classes, save notes, and so forth. Uh, we're going to be able to do that with a database um, in a different way. So think about what is available for us to use in the in the in, in Cordova and how would you apply that to make an app? Uh, we have like the vibration feature and we can work with the app with the contacts of the device. So let's say we wanted to um, load up a contact from the device to send them a message about a class. That's something that we could do with that doc with the plugin here. Later on, we'll look at another plugin, a plugin that is not part of the official Cordova uh, library, but a third-party Cordova plugin. 
because there's authors out there creating plugins to tap into Cordova to do things that are not available here. Someone had previously asked a question to me, can I maybe make a calendar? Uh, can I save a calendar item? There's no built-in Cordova feature for that, but there are developers out there. I took a quick look. There's developers out there that have their own plugin that let you do that. So we're not going to do that, but what we're going to do later is we're going to add the ability to have social media sharing from our app. Let's say someone finds a really great class and they want to share it on Twitter. So we'll have a button that says share and it'll pop up that say, would you like to share on Facebook, on Twitter, on WhatsApp, or whatever social media they have. And we'll be able to share from our app to social media. That's like the big trend right now. Don't keep your app as a dead end just in your app. Share it out to social media. We'll be able to do that. It's another, it's another plugin, not part of the official Cordova, but we'll get to that when we get a little more advanced at the very latest in part three, possibly next time, because I want to talk about other things first. But the point is, think about what, we, what you can do with your tools available and what kind of app you can create. I said from the beginning, you're not going to be able to create the next Instagram, the next Facebook, the next kind of app like that, but you will be able to create a very powerful apps based on your idea. The project that we're creating, again, is this unofficial app for the college where people can browse classes, save classes, that sort of thing. Maybe on the next level of that, you know, level four of the project, we could then talk about saving that to a database and synchronizing it with accounts and all that advanced stuff. It requires infrastructure, cloud infrastructure, which is not free. That's when a server comes in. That's when, uh, you know, Microsoft Azure comes in. That's where Amazon Web Services come in. All that stuff that creates a cloud infrastructure for your app, which is out of our scope. What I want to do is uh, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll start to customize this app in that it's black and white and it looks exactly the same as everyone else's. We're going to start to customize it, change colors, icons, alignment and such. I don't like how much there's so, there's so much space here and that sort of thing. Let's customize that stuff. So we'll take a five minute break. When we come back, we'll, we'll come back to work with the CSS of the project. So we'll be back at 7.10.